camera and then oh okay we're live we're live bismillah salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in assalamu alaikum everyone here another episode of dr samurai's book um at ta'bir al-qur'ani and what i want to share with you today has to do with the word blessings um i think a lot, a lot of muslims are familiar with the word ni'ma um and so th- today we're going to dig into that a little bit but before we go to the screen uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what he's saying here in his chapter about this word. So in English, um, we have this concept of singular and plural, mm-hmm. right? So this is a box. And if I had multiple, it would be boxes, yeah. right? You just add an S a lot of times to make something plural. Camera, mm-hmm. cameras, computer, computers, mm-hmm. microphone, microphones, etc. right? Mm-hmm. So um, the concepts of plurals is pretty straightforward in the English language. In Arabic, it's really interesting. There are different kinds of plurals. Mm-hmm. It's a, actually a whole grammar study of different kinds of plurals. So you have, we, we mem- memorize the masculine plurals, mm-hmm. which is used for people, men and women. Yeah. There's the feminine plurals, which is used for objects, but it's also used exclusively for women also, mm-hmm. atun, atin, yeah. right? There are some words that are plural because the Arabs said they're plural. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're kind of like the collective nouns in English. Um, and then there are something called um, broken plurals, mm-hmm. right? But there's even something more than that. They're, they they have this concept kathra. What that means is the plural. That means the pl- the plural of many mm-hmm. and the plural of few. Yeah. So they have the plural of many and the mm-hmm. plural of few. few. So it's kind of like this. If I was to try to help you visualize that in English, even if you don't know Arabic, um, to give you an example of that. So you have the word book, right? Mm-hmm. And obviously in English, what's the plural of book? Books. Books. Right. So it's like. So it's like they're saying there's the word book and there's a one version of the plural that's books with a with a giant s and there's another version of book with s with a with small s a tiny s yeah. okay so and I'm not talking about capital and lowercase I'm just saying they mean there's a version of books that means lots of books yeah. and there's a version of saying books that's a few books yeah. usually less than 10 yeah. Or just a handful. You can say a handful of books. Mm-hmm. So they have a word for many books. One word, without saying the word many. Mm-hmm. They have a word for many books. And they can have a word for a handful of books. Mm-hmm. This would be jam'u kathra. This would be the equivalent of... Uh, wow, that jim got huge. Uh, jam'u... Where's my jim? I miss you, jim. Jam'u kathra. Uh, meaning the, the plural of many. Uh, and then they have this thing called jam'u qilla, uh, appropriately small, uh, uh, the plural of few. Okay, so they have this thing, plural of many and plural of few. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, and I said, today I'll, I'll talk to you about the word blessings, right? So the plural, so the Arabic word for blessing is ni'mah. Mm-hmm. Ni'matun yeah. is a blessing. Okay. Uh, Ni'ma comes from the Arabic word nu'uma. Nu'uma actually means softness. Mm-hmm. From it, we also get the word uh, uh, an'am, like mm-hmm. Surah Al-An'am, the sixth surah, mm-hmm. uh, which is the word for cattle. Mm-hmm. Uh, cattle because they move softly mm-hmm. and because they react softly. Mm-hmm. Other animals are very quick to react mm-hmm. and other animals are gentle in their reaction because they've been domesticated and their, their senses, their animal senses have been dulled, mm-hmm. right? So they're not able to run away from a predator. Like a, a goat has no chance, mm-hmm. right? A cow mm-hmm. has no chance. A deer has chance because it's not domesticated, yeah. right? So that's why they're called an'am. A blessing in Arabic is something that makes life soft and gentle. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. So that's that's where the word na'ima is called a blessing is because things that make life gentle and soft and comfortable. That's that's what the Arabic word blessing refers to or the, the uh, this word in Arabic. So a blessing, it doesn't really cover it, but it's close enough. Okay. Now, ni'ma means a blessing. Then you have an'um. An'umun. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is blessings. Yeah. But I'm going to put, I'll, I'll make the S on blessings small. What am I trying to say? This must be the plural of, plural of many or plural of few? A few. Yeah. This must be the plural of few. So a good translation of an'um is handful of blessings. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to look at an'um. Okay. Uh, then you have the Arabic word ni'amun. Let me make that bigger. 
Okay, a ni'amun is blessings also, mm -hmm. except I'm going to make the S a little bit gigantic. Gargantuan. Why am I doing that? Because this must be... For many, plural. Yeah, this would be the plural of many. Mm -hmm. So you could literally say many blessings. Mm -hmm. Okay, a great many blessings. You didn't have to say the word many in the Arabic. So ni'matun, a blessing. An'umun, a handful of blessings. And ni'amun, many blessings. Mm -hmm. So in the Quran, you find both plurals are being used. Once this one, once this one. Shakiran li an'umihi ijtabahu wa hadahu ila khiratin mustaqim. This is surah number 16, uh, ayah number 121. Mm -hmm. 16, 121. Um, and the second one... Uh, is 3120. I've highlighted the word here already in red. Uh, so you have wa asbaga alaykum ni'amahu zahiratan wa batinatan. Yeah? Ni'amahu. So now notice an'um an'um keep the Arabic word in mind Ahmad an'um many or few? Uh, uh, many. Oh no, sorry. Uh, an'um an'um little. Few. few yeah. So the top one, shakiran li an'umihi, many or few? Few. Ah. Ni'am, many or few? A many. Many. Asbagha alaykum ni'amahu. Many. Many. So the top one is few. Mm -hmm. So the 16, 121 is few. Yeah. And the 3120 is many. Many. Yeah. Right? So let's read the understand what the ayah is talking about, mm -hmm. and then let's figure out what Allah is doing here by using few one pl place and many the other place, right? Mm -hmm. So the sixteen one twenty one, the conversation actually starts in sixteen one twenty, one ayah before this. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qalitan lillahi hanifan wa lam yaku min al mushrikin. No doubt Ibrahim alayhi salam was a nation all by himself, sub submissive before Allah, solely focused on Him. And had never committed shirk. He was never one from those that had associated a partner with God. Shakiran li anumihi, as he remained grateful for his blessings. Meaning Ibrahim remained grateful for his blessings. Ijtabahu, um, Allah had chosen him. Wahadahu, and he guided him ila salat mustaqim to a straight path. Mm -hmm. Who is this talking about? This few one is talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, and it's saying that he was grateful for blessings Allah has given him. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, grateful for the blessings Allah had given him. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then, Alam taraw, haven't you seen? Remember, huwa yarahuma yarani hum yarawna, hiya tarahuma tarayani, hunna yarayna, anta tara, antum atrayani, antum tarawna, tarawna, and then alam takes the noon away. So, Alam taraw, I can't find my mouse. Alam taraw is haven't you seen? Anna Allah, that Allah, sakhara lakum, subdued for you, uh, overpowered for you. Ma fis samawati, wa ma fil ardi, whatever's in the skies and whatever's in the earth. Wa asbagha, and unleashed alaykum, over you. Ni'amahu, he unleashed his many. blessings, his many blessings over you. Zahiratan wa batinatan, in obvious ways and secret ways. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ وَيُجَادِلُوا فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ And yet there are from among people those who, who debate with Allah without any knowledge وَلَا هُدًا And without guidance وَلَا كِتَابٍ مُنِيرٍ And without a book that gives light. Mm -hmm. Now here, the part that mentions blessings is Allah saying Allah unleashed uh, blessings on you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Allah unleashed blessings on you. Now it's interesting. So one time Ibrahim is being grateful for Allah's blessings. Yeah. The other time Allah is unleashing the blessings. Yeah. Ibrahim alayhi salam is a human being. And he is one of the most grateful human beings that ever walked this earth. Mm -hmm. And yet a human being's life is limited. Mm -hmm. As grateful, if every second of a human being's life is spent being grateful to Allah, they still only are able to be grateful for a few blessings compared to the actual blessings they got. Mm -hmm. Think about it this way, Ahmed and Mariam. We have the blessing of sight. Yeah. We're able to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
but we're able to see every single second yeah. and every millisecond, mm -hmm. right? And every moment of our sight is actually a new blessing. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we're able to see and our eye isn't getting exhausted, mm -hmm. that eye actually not giving us pain for doing the work. Because, you know, when you, when you use a machine, it gets used up. And it gets grinded up. Mm -hmm. And the more you use something, the more there's wear and tear and it breaks down. Yeah. The eye continuing to not give me pain and still allowing me to see by Allah's blessing mm -hmm. is a blessing that for every millisecond I should be thankful for. Mm -hmm. Then the eye helps me see something that benefits me. Mm -hmm. Right? The, uh, it is the eye that helped me see the word on the screen mm -hmm. for that moment that allowed me to learn. And that learning then continued to give me other benefits. Meaning that one blessing of the eye and the ability to see is now benefiting me in countless ways. And each one of those ways I should be grateful for. There is no way for me to keep track. Mm -hmm. There's no way for me to keep track of. And by the way, the neural connection between my eye mm -hmm. and my brain. Yeah. I see something and I'm reading it. And I'm reading it and then I'm saying it and I'm saying it and I'm able to have somebody else hear it and communicate with me. Oh my God, the amount of things that are happening inside my body, mm -hmm. the amount of things that are happening outside of my body, all because of this one blessing mm -hmm. are so un so limitless, so uncountable mm -hmm. that we're not even able to actually fully count one blessing. Mm -hmm. Forget counting all the blessings. We can I can't even fully count. One, One blessing. Mm -hmm. So I could say something like, Ya Allah, I'm grateful for the eyes you've given me. Mm -hmm. Right? I could say that. And not, I won't say that every day. Sometimes it comes to mind and I'll say it. But even if I said it every day, even if I said it every second of every day, even then it would not cover the ways in which my eyes are blessing me or the ways in which my nose is blessing me or the way in which my clothes are blessing me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You get it? Yeah. This is why Allah says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا If you were to count the favor of Allah, meaning even the single favor of Allah, you wouldn't be able to fully grasp it. You can't even understand how one blessing fully benefits you. It's too much. Mm -hmm. There's too much to, for you to know. And there are, even if we did know, if somebody says, no, 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 I'm going to do a scientific calculation of how many ways in which my eye is blessing me in this second. If they did that, what did Allah say? وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً In ways that are obvious and in ways that are not obvious. not obvious. Meaning even if I did analysis and research, I can only find out things that are obvious, which is hard enough and impossible enough. Yeah. But then there's another universe of blessings that is what? Not obvious. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what makes it impossible for me to be grateful enough to Allah ever. No human being, I, you, in fact, if all of humanity, all we ever did was shukr to Allah, it still wouldn't even come close to being enough. It wouldn't even be a drop in the ocean to what we say. When we say Alhamdulillah, it's as if we surrender the idea that we're not capable of it. Hamd itself belongs to Allah and all of creation is falling short. That's actually what we're saying in Alhamdulillah. So as amazing as Ibrahim alayhi salam was, Allah used his example to humble us and say, in the end, an entire life of being grateful, Shakir and by the way, a hal, and it's an ism, which means constancy. So from the Balagha sense, it even means that he was constantly grateful. And even as a life of being constantly grateful, he could only manage to be grateful for a handful of blessings. <coughs> then imagine where we stand. Because a human being in the end can only do so much. But compare that to the actual blessings Allah unleashes. Mm -hmm. That's way, way more, right? So the, the plural of many got used. He unleashes onto you his many blessings. The ones you may be able to find see in the seen world and the ones that are in the unseen, subhanAllah. It's an incredible comparison. Just by using the two plurals, Allah taught us an amazing lesson. He taught us, taught us the lesson that we have to be grateful our entire life but never should we ever think, I think I'm grateful enough, I got it. Yeah. Like I, I can move on to other things now. Uh, the, grat the, you know, the gratitude is check. Yeah. Or you know, some people, forget some people, I or you might end up carelessly saying, you know, I'm a really grateful person. Mm -hmm. uh, are you though? Are you? Because 
If I'm a really grateful person, that must mean I'm accomplishing Allah's gratitude for ni'am. Mm-hmm. But I, I can't even get close to what? An'um, if, if that's all Ibrahim salam could do. Mm-hmm. So we should, you know, there are some things that, that are, we, we say them casually, and they might end up being a kind of self-righteousness. Allah says, La tuzakku anfusakum, don't declare yourselves pure. So, you know, I'm really grateful. No, you could say, Ya Allah, I'm grateful for this blessing. Mm-hmm. Or I'm really grateful, like I can say, I'm really grateful to have the chance to share the word of Allah with you. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm really grateful to have access to resources that allows me to do that. I'm really grateful for having my students. I'm really grateful for having parents that are making dua for me. I'm really grateful for having healthy children. You can make, you can say those things. That's fine. But don't say that about yourself as in, I'm a really grateful person. Mm-hmm. Not a healthy thing. Yeah. Right? And we should constantly acknowledge how impossible to count Allah's blessings are. This is the last lesson I'll share with you from this. If you really, and I really understood this, then complaining about our life would become very difficult. No matter what. If you, if I really understood this, as many problems I could have in my life, as many problems as I could have, what is constantly happening? Allah is unleashing His favor on us, the ones that we can see. Sometimes we can see a problem, we don't see the blessing. Yeah. Why? Because the blessing is not zahira, the blessing is batina, it's in the hidden. Yeah. Right? And then what does Allah say? Yet there are some people who argue about Allah without knowing anything, without guidance, without a book that gives light. Because a person sees the pessimistic situation in their life. My my dad yells at me, my mom hates me, I lost my job, everybody nobody, nobody likes me. They, you know, I'm in this situation, that situation. And there are those are real situations. They're bad situations. As bad as those situations are, there will still be things you can be grateful for. If Yusuf alayhi salam can be grateful in in jail, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you should be grateful. That we that you know, I mean that you can't get like I've been kidnapped. My my brothers tried to kill me, and now I've been falsely accused, and now I'm in jail. Mm-hmm. And yet he's sitting there, and he, when inmates come and talk to him, instead of telling him his his sad story, he's telling him reasons why he why they should be grateful too. And he says, "This is Allah's favor on my family." He literally said, "Allah has favored my family." And I was like, "Yusuf, I said, you got so much drama in your family. You should have been like, man, my family got drama." And that's why I ended up here. Yeah. Look at where my family ended. I blame my family for my problems, bro. No, he says, this is This is the favor of Allah has done to me and for other people, but most people aren't grateful. Mm-hmm. And he refers to Ibrahim alayhi salam. It's like he learned this lesson that entire life of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was about to be thrown into a fire by his father. He got kicked out of his society, or not, not, not fire by his father, by, by the king. He had to, you know, leave his family in the middle of a desert. His father expelled him from home when he was he was a child. He lived a lonely life, yeah. right? And an entire life of just being grateful. Like it's hard to think of a time in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam where he was living in comfort. It's hard to think of a time like that. And yet it's hard to think of a time where he wasn't his heart wasn't content and he wasn't grateful. Yeah. So we're, we're, it's an incredible religion. We face reality. We're not blind to our problems. They do hurt us. The, even the Prophet ﷺ got hurt, yeah. uh, and he was sad. And Allah would say to him, "وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ." We know that your chest gets tight because of the hurtful things that they say. So Allah knows that it, the hurtfulness happens, mm-hmm. but yet at the same time, the slave remains grateful to Allah. The and the followers of of uh, Musa salam, when they came out of the desert, mm-hmm. and they were like in the hundreds of thousands, and they were burning in the sun. And their babies were, you know, get, getting dehydrated, and the mothers didn't have milk to give because they hadn't had anything to drink themselves. Mm-hmm. And the old were dying and getting sick. And they're like, we're, "What has Musa brought us into? We're homeless. We're in the middle of the desert. Okay, the Pharaoh was going to kill us, but now the desert will kill us. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we going to do?" And Musa Alayhi salam, gathers all of them and he gives them a speech and he says, "Well, if the Abdana Rabbukum la inshakartum la azidannakum," and your master had declared, "If you were to be grateful, then Allah will give you more and more." Just be grateful, just be grateful, just be grateful, just be grateful. And even then, you'll only be grateful for just a few things, while the reality is Allah is giving you many things. Right? Yeah. You When somebody tells you, look at the bright side, yeah, you're like, what bright side? Yeah. Uh, first of all, open your eyes and there will be a bright side. And then there's another bright side that's always batina. It's always there. That's like somebody saying, you know, appreciate the air. And you're like, what air? I don't see any oxygen. Uh, it's always there. Mm-hmm. You're always breathing it, right? 
So it's it's constantly there and we have to develop that Quran mindset. And it will, wallahi, when we develop that mindset, problems will start disappearing because when Allah sees a grateful slave, then he makes the difficulty easy to handle and he creates ease. Two things, he makes you stronger against the difficulty and then over time he removes the difficulty too. But he he wants to see from us gratitude. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us grateful people for the the... The, the uncountable blessings that he's given us and make us of those who can at least be grateful for a handful of them in this life. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum guys. Happy Ramadan and uh, remember do your best and I'll do the rest. Assalamu alaikum.